This is the me experience personal tab that I built, which is now in the Teams repo um, in for PNB. So this is based off on the article that Baltic released a couple of months back on creating a me experience, building a personal Teams app, and there was absolutely no sample to back this article, which is which was something that I know a few folks who are asking in our chats as well. So what I did was I went ahead and developed this uh, SPFX personal app. It has three tabs, planning, insights, and settings. Basically, this planning and insights are built using the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. You can see here planning has agenda, it has my tasks, um, sorry, it has my tasks, it has my meetings and my documents, my recently used documents. So it's, it's all centric. It's related to what I want to do uh, or what I am interested in when I'm at work. So that's the me experience and insights are basically around all the files uh, or the documents that I'm interested in trending around me, shared with me, again, using the get component in Microsoft Graph Toolkit and settings, basically just to show you, you, you can store your own settings using Graph open extensions. You can probably add more configurations. Contributions are always welcome in these repositories. So if you want to add more of settings, then you could go ahead and open a PR for that. So this is what I've built and what I can show you is the manifest file. So we have for each of those tabs, we have uh, three separate web parts. And what I've done is I've added them into the static tabs for each of those web parts. So that's basically how you can get the tabbed effect for the personal app. And as you can see here, every single component here is built using the graph toolkit, which was, which made it uh, made it really simple. So we have the agenda one, we have task, and we have the get, which basically gives you all the, so this is one of my favorite component in graph toolkit, because if you don't have a particular component in the graph toolkit, mind you, it's also open source, you could go ahead and add new components, but if you don't find one, then you could go ahead and add your own template, which is files one here, you can see, and I'm passing the data that I received from the get component and then fleshing it out. So yeah, that's basically what I've done here. And in this, uh, so what I have done is I have simplified my work by reusing the graph toolkit. So I really don't have to worry about the data side of things, just plugged and played graph components, which is brilliant. The only service I've done is for the settings web part, basically, because it uh, refers to the open extensions. So to do my CRUD operations on settings, I have used the services for graph. Uh, which is basically here. So you can find all this in the repository. A big shout out to HOA because this um, this this sample is uh, has theming enabled, which is basically something inspired from one of his samples as well. So yeah, that's basically it. Go ahead and check out my blog, or you could go to the repository and have a look at the source code. Thank you so much. Well, Rabia, don't don't stop sharing. That was super fast, uh, much faster than uh, certainly needed. So let's go back on the solution. I will ask some questions and let's clarify yeah. why are we doing things and all of that. So first of all, on the craft services, you did a craft extension. So you did an open yeah. craft extension. Why did you do that? What what is what is actually? Can we recap on why yeah. why did you choose to use this approach for the implementation? Good question. So personal tabs. Uh, uh, do, do not have a settings uh, or a configuration panel for you like you would see in a Teams one. So if you have a Teams tab, you basically, and you're using SPFX, then you can get the web part configurations in same as you would get in your SharePoint pages, but personal tabs do not have that. There are different ways you could implement these settings, but uh, I thought this was easier using an open extension because it's very similar to what you have the user profile properties in SharePoint, but more graph centric, so you can basically call it anywhere. Yeah, so that's exactly why I went with the settings and, here. And has to kind of a one one kind of a consideration. You mentioned the user profile properties mm -hmm. in SharePoint, which is kind of a cool thing. We, if you come from yeah. a SharePoint world, you know about it. You can add an additional property. Yeah. You can store stuff there, but mm -hmm. you cannot automate that. That's really the challenge. Yeah. But can you it's can you automate this one as part of the solution deployment? Yeah, definitely, because it's a graph call. So if you want, you can go ahead and use CLI for Microsoft 365. 
the one other question, what I what I wanted to kind of also pinpoint here is that you're using your this is a personal application and that's really cool. You can yeah. you can and and the concept itself is absolutely brilliant. People can pull it down, they can extend that, they can repackage that and publish that to the store. By the way, if you are interested, everything is MIT licensed. It's this is what we want you to do. But the fact that you created the manifest manually, why is that? Can we recap uh, that decision? Yeah, so because we're adding more tabs here, so for example, I, I'll open up here. So yeah, so this one is our manifest. So we need to, because we need to add all, all these web parts in uh, to the static tabs, we need to go ahead and manually do it. At the, at the moment, this is the only way we could do it. And yeah, so that's exactly why we have chosen this yeah. path. So, so basically, when if you would use the out-of-the-box sync to Teams capability, yeah. we will actually generate an automatic manifest for all of the web parts. And in this case, yeah, it would exactly. be three different solutions. And that's not yeah, a really optimal from an end-user perspective. Exactly. We want to have exactly. a really complete solution. So we're kind of yeah. building that manual manifest. And this is actually, by the way, an awesome example why we will now add, an, add a capability of embedding the manifest uh, inside of the SPPKT file. Because... Yeah. That will then enable people like Rabia and the developers to include the complex manifest, like this kind of a complex configuration in the manifest, and deploy that to the app catalog and then automatically sync that to Teams. So you don't have to manually get the manifest package as a zip file together with the color, uh, the, the images, and then get it installed to the Teams, which has to be done right now with the solution. Yeah. So, yeah. Not a super optimal. Yeah, which is uh, and that Sorry, the existing uh, support is not super optimal, but we will get it uh, more supported. Sorry, Fabia. Yeah, no, th that's fine. I was just going to point to the documentation that Waldek uh, added here. So it's all captured here, all the uh, things that you need to keep in mind when you are considering these tabs. So yeah, I would suggest everyone in this call to go have a look at this very comprehensive article. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Rabia, uh, on that one. No Relatively worries. quick one, and, and sorry for jumping in. There was just a few pointers which we wanted to talk about for the for the audience yeah. as well. It is a really, really great solution, um, and it's a really so great demo to do as well. So awesome stuff. Awesome. Thanks.